Hey guys, I wanted to see how far I can get with uh, Raylib uh, with my little breakout clone here and uh, it actually went very well. I was able to convert uh, my little demo program to work in Raylib without much changes. And uh, here is the, uh, the code here. It should look very familiar but I'll go through with it after through each uh, line. But let's run it first. It's opening up in my other monitor. I'm bringing it over here. And you can see that it looks very similar. Um, I've changed a few things, like the uh, left and right arrow key move the paddle now. But everything else is very familiar. And if I hit the uh, space bar, we release the ball. Let me move the, uh... OK, I was too slow with that. Let's try again. All right, mouse pointer out of the way. And uh, it actually performs very well. Uh, the only things um, I didn't anticipate was uh, having to redraw the, uh, the ball and the paddle. I basically had to double the, uh, the size and it still kind of looks a little small. Now, there's also a full screen option in uh, Raylib, which I've added to the code, but I can't demonstrate because I have a dual monitor set up and every time I flip to it, it messes things up and it opens on the other monitor so you wouldn't be able to see it. But I left it in the code, so if you want to try that on your own computers, you could hit the F key and it'll toggle into full screen. You hit the F key again, it'll resume back to the normal screen. So let's just uh, exit and uh, let me go through the code here. All right, so I added, uh, so we can change this, uh, make it uh, various sizes, but the paddle and the ball stay the same. So some things uh, will look out of place. Now, as I did with the, uh, the DOS version, uh, we could alternate between uh, using a, a bitmap for the uh, the ball and paddle, and I'll just switch that right now so you can see. And let's save and run it now. And instead of using the uh, bitmap, now we're using uh, standard uh, shapes. And again, it works the same way. And again, with the, with the collision detection, I'm not using the Raylib collision detection uh, functions. I'm using the ones uh, I rolled myself. And I'm doing that because I'm also incorporating a few other things and it just makes uh, managing uh, everything a lot easier. So if you go back into the code, I'll go. So we have a bunch of constants here for the uh, paddle ball uh, walls, just like we did with the DOS version. I added paddle width, paddle height, so you can change those if you're using the uh, the shape drawing. And uh, in order for Raylib to load the uh, the bitmap images, we have to use the uh, a 2D texture, and that's what we have here. And wherever we have, let me change this back. Wherever we had uh, the put image function, we were replacing it with the draw texture. And wherever we had bar and rectangle, or replacing with the draw rectangle in uh, Raylib. So we're not using this anymore here. It's just some extra code I forgot to delete. And this was from the DOS version. We don't need that anymore either. And let's just save everything. 
but everything else um, remains the same. So are all our collision uh, procedures exactly the same? And I did uh, change this a little bit uh, to use the uh, screen width in order to uh, prevent the paddle from going off screen. But all the other functions pretty much the same. I did modify, what did I modify? There's one more thing I'm forgetting. Oh yes, so before I was getting the uh, full coordinates from the get chords, I, I replaced that with get shape rec, which gets the uh, record for the entire uh, shape. Uh, it's a lot easier to use though th those bits of information in Raylib because it doesn't use the X2 or Y2 coordinate for the second second set of perimeters. It uses the width and height, so that works better. Um, I'm not using the color here anymore. I don't think I did that was just extra. Let's make sure it compiles because I've been deleting things. Yeah, it still works. Oh, one thing we can do is get rid of those borders. Um, so the those wall borders, uh, I left in there in the DOS version to show you the collision detection with the wall. Uh, we don't need them here. I've already explained that. Um, draw wall. Okay, so we can comment this out and it should get rid of those blue walls. Okay, here we go. So let's uh, make sure everything still works. Yep. Now, one thing I didn't do was see how I could change the uh, the bricks to different color, but I didn't think that would add much to the video. Uh, maybe in the future I'll look into that. I just wanted to do a straight port and see how much I had to change. And I was kind of surprised because I was expecting this to be a little more difficult, and it ended up not being so difficult. Um, everything kind of just worked, and usually that's not the case. So if we look here at the uh, the main code, it's almost line by line exactly the same. The, the only place it changes is once we start initializing the screen, we set the uh, frames per second to 120 if we wanted to go uh, slower. Let's try 60. Let's make it go slower or faster. I'm not quite sure, let's see. Yeah, it makes it go slower. Okay, so let's change that back to 120. And this is our main uh, input code. We're checking for the same things, uh, left, right movement, uh, spacebar to release the ball and uh, a quit function which sets the uh, if you hit the uh, Q it sets the finish variable to true and we exit out of the loop it closes the window it finishes the program um, the finished uh, variable is also set to true when the ball hits the bottom wall collision Here we go, right here. So if it hits the bottom wall, that means you missed uh, getting it with the paddle. So it sets the uh, the game to finished and uh, we're out of it. Let's see. And here's the main um, code to do the, uh, the drawing. So 
every time we uh, move our paddle, the uh, the location is updated, and we do this by using the move player delta and using these variables. So when we, whenever we call go left or go right, these variables are incremented or decremented and uh, we then check for any collisions and then we uh, begin drawing everything. Um, if there were any collisions, uh, it would remove any uh, of the bricks that came in contact because we'd be setting them to not be active. So next time it would draw, it would draw those uh, bricks missing. It would also change the direction of the ball. So when the ball was being drawn, it would go a different direction. And that's it. This is the main loop. This will probably stay the same no matter how many things I add to drawing on the screen. They'll just be either inserted uh, here or just have another piece of code uh, that incorporates all the drawing and I just put the uh, procedure name here. So it, instead of being draw shapes, uh, draw everything or draw world or whatever. Um, but that's it. Uh, let me just uh, bring up the uh, the DOS version so we can see one last time. This is how it looked. And uh, let's bring up the, uh, the Windows version right in front of it. So a little smaller, but uh, it behaves exactly the same. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.